Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Coach Matt over here, EliteThrowsCoaching.com. Coming to you today to continue our talk, our reshoot of our original Glide Shot Put videos that we did about three and a half years ago. Wanted to go through this with you, wanted to take you through pretty much the old videos, but redo them with newer information, more up-to-date information. As a coach, my education is always continuing. I'm always trying to learn more. I'm always trying to coach better, and along the way, I learn new things to teach, new ways to teach them, and things that will definitely help you out in your journey as a shot putter. All right, so in the previous videos, we talked about shot selection, how to hold the shot, and then release drills. Today, we're going to start talking about power position. Now, the power position, or your standing throw, that is the very end of your glide. That actually has to deal with getting power from the ground, delivering that power, transferring that power through your body, and pushing all that force, all that power into the shot to get it to go as far as possible. Well, how do we do that? The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that our body is set up correctly. Now, at a camp or at a clinic or when I'm working with somebody brand new, after they do their release drills that we talked about in the previous video, we start to work from the ground up, work from their feet all the way up to their shoulders and their head. Now, if you recall in the last video, when we did our releases, we actually had you start your releases with your feet perfectly straight. So when you're passing to the person or you're passing it, pushing it against the wall, everything is perfectly straight and in line. There's a reason why we don't want the feet to be crooked. We don't want your feet, you know, crossed behind the other or just really wide so that they're not together. And the reason why is we want to get you used to pushing everything straight down the middle of that sector. So here's the first thing that we do when we're in a camp. Here's the first thing that we do when we're in a clinic. We make sure the athlete looks down. Their feet are always straight. And then they do their releases, pushing, you know, slap, pull, push, everything that we talked about in the last video. From there, what we're going to do is just have them pivot on their toes toward their throwing side, their power side. So if they're right-handed like me, they're going to pivot on their toes to the right. And what do we notice? We notice that we now have that heel-toe relationship. So if I bring the feet forward, you can see Heel toe, bring the foot back, we're still in heel toe. If we pivot on our toes, look at it, we're stacked back up again, pretty much as straight as possible. Now, might be off by a couple inches depending on your foot size. I have giant feet and long legs, so I'm always off a little bit. But we're going to turn, heel toe position, turn, feet are straight. And actually, I just have them do this a couple times to get the idea of when the feet and the legs and everything turn down the middle, guess what else happens? The hips turn down the middle, the shoulders turn down the middle. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. We're going to get them in a good heel-toe relationship. Now, the distance we want them apart is going to be about the same distance as if you told them to jump as high in the air as possible. If you had somebody jump as high in the air as possible, they're going to be in a nice athletic position. Jumping is the most explosive thing as an athlete that you can do. So you want to generate force, as much force as possible, to jump up in the air. Well, when we get set up, we're going to still be in that same heel-toe position, but we want our feet, some people set up really, really wide. Some people start really, really narrow. We want our feet to be about the same position as if you were going to jump as high as possible in the air, that's how wide apart we want our feet. Not too wide, not too narrow. Over the course of time, the athletes will learn exactly how or where to put their feet to deliver the most power. For now, this is a good start. The next thing we do, we tell them to shift weight. Now, in the past, I've put a stopwatch around my neck and literally shifted so that the stopwatch was right over the power foot, it was over my right foot. What I love to do now is try to get the belly button and the chin in a straight line. So belly button and the chin, straight line, 
over the power foot. And you do so in a way that you can easily pick up your blocking foot without shifting and lifting. So we don't want a shift and lift. We want you just to sit on this bent power leg, belly button, chin or belly button and nose over the power foot in a straight line so that you can lift up your blocking foot. From there, we just want them to bounce. Keep the weight on the leg and bounce. Get used to keeping the weight on the power leg. So again, we don't want to shift and bounce shift and bounce, we want to just stay on that leg and bounce. And from here, all we're going to do, stay in that bent leg position, all the weight is still on the power leg, all we're going to do is just turn the shoulders back. Now from here, what does this look like? Well, this looks like a proper power position. And this is step one. When you're working with your athletes for the first time, when you get them out in the circle, and when you get them out in the field, the biggest group of athletes, even if you have 20, 30 throwers on your team who are brand new, this is a position that you put them in to teach them how to shift weight, keep weight back on their power leg, and how to turn back over the power leg. This is discus, by the way, or shot, to keep the weight, to keep the shot back. Keep the weight back behind that power foot, behind that power leg. First day of practice type of stuff. So if you teach this early, you won't have to go back and correct it. Now, over the course of the next couple of days, we're going to go through the rest of the power position. Unlike the older videos, we're going to really break it down, take it step by step, to teach you from the ground up how to put yourself and how to put your athletes in a perfect power position so that you don't have to correct and try to fix this stuff at the end of the season. Teach it early on, fix it early on, that way you don't have to worry about it when it counts during those big championship meets. All right, so keep checking out EliteThrowsCoaching.com. We just released our new team training. Make sure to click the link, read all about the team training. The first email went out just a few days ago on Sunday. It is a phenomenal resource, something I wish I had when I didn't have a coach and when I didn't have somebody to work with one-on-one. -on -one, this is what I needed. It never existed up until now. Now you have a chance to be a part of it. Make sure to click the link, check it out. And as always, if you have any questions, go to EliteThrowsCoaching.com, leave your question in the Contact Us field, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Hope to talk to you soon.